In today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of testing batteries on vehicles. One of the most critical components in any vehicle is the 12 volt battery. On a standard internal combustion engine car, we use that 12 volt battery to crank the engine and get the engine started. And even on a hybrid car like this, we rely on that 12 volt battery to power up accessories and the modules that drive the hybrid functionality. As a technician, it's very important that we know how to assess and audit the health of a battery so that we can track it and do preventative maintenance and avoid failures. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the ways that we could test that battery. We'll talk about open circuit voltage testing. We'll talk about a couple of the different types of load testing, and we'll look at the tools that we use to do those processes. Let's start with a basic test of open circuit voltage. To do this, all I need is a DVOM or some kind of multimeter that can do DC volts. So to get that started, I'm gonna set up on DC volts and go to my battery. The volt in particular here has the battery located in the trunk. So I'm gonna take my leads and all I'm gonna do is positive and negative, right? So I've got my red lead on my positive, black lead on my negative. I hook those up and I look for my reading. With everything hooked up, we get 12.59 volts. That's a great reading. 12.6 is considered 100% for a sealed lead acid 12 volt battery in a vehicle. Something we wanna pay attention to when we do this reading is what was the car doing prior to making this measurement? If the car was on or just came off of idling and running for a while, or it was on a battery charger, we wanna remove what's called the surface charge. In a sealed lead acid battery, there's often some makeup of electricity left within the electrolyte and the battery package itself that's from the charger or the alternator, and it's not being created by the chemical process of the battery. To remove that, we wanna turn on the headlights, so we'll put an electrical load on the vehicle for about 30 seconds to a minute in order to remove that surface charge. This test is great for just a quick outlook at how viable is that battery to have good health and have good operation, but it doesn't tell us the whole story. Open circuit voltage just tells us the potential. Voltage is only the potential of what work could be done. We could have a battery that has a decent open circuit voltage, but maybe lacks the ability to deliver enough current for a starter motor. That's where load-based testing comes into play, and it's generally a better choice for auditing a battery and seeing what it's really capable of. In that space, we've got two primary options. One of those is a micro load tester like this one. This one uses a microprocessor inside to put a small load on the battery, and it measures down to the thousandth of a volt in order to decide how does the battery handle that load and what is its recovery time from that load. These do a great job, generally, but they are susceptible to setup issues. We've gotta be really mindful about how clean my leads are, how well connected my leads are, as well as how clean and well connected my terminals are, because at 1,000th of a volt, it doesn't take a lot of resistance to have an impact on the tool. But these tools generally do a pretty good job. To set this one up, I'm gonna go back to my battery. So I'm gonna go down, battery test and hit go. The first thing that it's gonna ask me is to wiggle the clamps. Then it's gonna ask me for the CCA or cold cranking amp value of the battery. I can generally find this underneath the sticker or maybe I need to look it up and make sure that the proper battery has been installed. This particular one is 630 CCA. So I go to 630, hit go. It puts on the first load. Then it looks for a second load and then it looks for a recovery period. Once the test is complete, it gives me a result here. It says we've got a good battery. This is a popular tool to use because of its small compact size and its ease of use. We can put this in the hands of most people and if you can operate a cell phone, you can probably make this work. The other attractive thing is that it can create a receipt that's got the test results as well as a unique identifier and that can go with a repair order or in most cases it's required to go with a warranty claim if we're going to warranty that battery. The downsides of this tool is that it can be sensitive like we talked about with terminals and connections. The other thing is that we're putting a very small load on a battery and it's not that close to what say a starter motor is going to ask of that battery in order to crank the engine. When it comes to testing, Testing is always best to do as near to an operating condition as we can. So if a starter motor takes 150 or 200 amps in order to crank the engine, 
we want to audit the battery and test the battery in a similar state. A tester like this has the ability to put that high load, high current demand on the battery. This is a carbon pile based tester. So inside beneath this knob, I've got several disks of carbon that are used as the resistive load that have the ability to put hundreds of amps against that battery. The great thing about this tester is that it will be similar to a starter and it's going to put a high load on that battery. We'll go ahead and set up this tester. So this one has got much larger cables. You'll notice that these look a lot like jumper cables. Because they're going to carry such a heavy load, we need a lot larger cable to do that work. I'm going to do my best to get around some part of the terminal. I may have to settle for a post there. And then I want to come over to my tool and make sure that I'm set up. So this tool has got two dials. This is fairly typical of a carbon pile load tester. This one is showing me where my amperage output is at as well as my DC volts. And so you'll notice right there, I'm just under 12 and a half. We did a couple tests with the electronic tester. And so we've lost just a little bit. Um, there are several things on this dial that I want to look at. One is that I've got some place for minimum voltages on my battery test. We'll talk about that. We also get state of charge like we just talked about. And then we've got alternator output. And so I can see just if I'm getting voltage values from my alternator or elevated voltage when I go to run the car. We're going to look at state of charge first. You'll notice there's an okay to test zone and then I need to charge zone on there. We don't want to test a battery if we're below a certain point because we just risk damaging the battery. And so in this case, we're right in the green so we can proceed with our test. Above that then in the battery test zone, I've got my zone where a battery will pass and then I've got this tier of failing or minimum voltages based on temperature. At 70 degrees, 9.6 volts is my pass or fail voltage. If we dip below that at 70 degrees, then we're gonna need to charge and retest our battery and perhaps ultimately replace it. That value then changes as the temperature goes down because things move slower when it's cold. As things get colder, the minimum voltage goes down as well. That's a chart that you can readily find online as well, and it might be a little bit easier to read. So to get this started, what we do is look at the battery and again, check what our CCA is. So we've got 630 cold crank amps. This chart shows me all three. And so here are two things I can look at. I can look at the blue CCA and I can look for 630 on that. Kind of hard to see in that small scale. If you follow that up and notice the rule of thumb and process for testing batteries is to load them at half of their CCA value. And so if I take 630 and divide it by two, it's going to be easier to see it as 315 on this black scale in amps rather than the blue scale. And so I'm going to look for about 315 amps. I'm going to try to load it at that value and I'm going to wait 15 seconds. One of the things that this tool in particular does is that it has a timer inside and it will beep at me when 15 seconds is over. If I did not have that, I'm going to have to pay attention to time on my own. So I'm going to load the battery right there and hold on to it and try to maintain about 315. So there it beeped at my 15 seconds. You'll notice we did not dip below the 9.6. And so that battery tests good. That's our process for testing a 12 volt battery in a vehicle. It's important to recognize the different tooling that we've got and where they all fit in the sequence. Checking open circuit voltage with my voltmeter is a great start. And it really gives me an indicator about the ability, potential ability of that battery. But we've got to keep in mind that current output is the ultimate goal. And so if I can test for current, and put a load on that battery, that's always gonna yield better results. At the end of the day, we wanna make sure that the battery stays charged and maintained. That's what keeps a healthy battery long-term. So make sure that the battery is strapped down properly, that the terminals are clean, and that there's no leakage from the post area that creates corrosion. All these things can create resistance and volt drops to cause issues with slow cranks and other things like that.